Investment statute 121809, subsection E, it this literally says, service. the court shall review the petition on file and any evidence offered by the plaintiff, including evidence Mr. harassment Myers, by- Could you just slow down a little bit? I'm trying to listen to you, but you're going off- My bad, I get worried that you're gonna cut me off. I'm sorry. The court, sh this is, this is, I'm reading a section of the injunction for harassment in and of itself statute, 121809. of acts. Over any period of time that is directed at a specific person and that would cause the reasonable person to be seriously alarmed, annoyed, or harassed, and the conduct, in fact, seriously alarms, annoys, or harasses. You're talking fast again. My bad. It means that it's a series of acts, you know, that would be, I'm just going to read it word for word. That you would, don't need to do that. I have the statute right here. Perfect. Perfect. So I'm, 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 state statutes concerning orders of protection do not authorize their use to discourage people from yelling or engaging in harassment of the type prescribed by statutory provision that governs injunction against harassment, nor do they authorize the use of firearms restrictions to provide incentives for positive behavior or to teach people a lesson about civilized conduct. And you said it, you said, I sounded. You're talking awfully fast again. I'm sorry. You referred my language being uncivilized. That's legal. That's what, that's what Mayhar versus CUNA, Appeals Court Division 2, under statute authorizing injunction against harassment, even though alleged harassment victim may have overheard a segment of a conversation, alleged harassing act was not directed at alleged victim. That's Lafar. Really hard for me to pay attention when you're going so fast. My bad. My brain turns off. I feel you. I feel you. I'm trying to. Conversation between alleged harasser and third party did not meet statutory definition. All right, we got about two more minutes, and then I'll hear from this Walker. Sound judicial policy ordinary motivates us to avoid addressing constitutional issues unless absolutely necessary to resolve a case. Lafaro has failed to establish the statutory retirement requirements for relief under ARS. 12-1809, the injunction for harassment. However, we feel, excuse me, and that deficiency is sufficient to vacate the injunction. Okay, however, we feel compelled to address the unconstitutional application of 12-1809 to permit an injunction, placing significant restrictions on Cahill's freedom of speech. The injunction against Cahill was unconstitutionally broad because of its infringement on his first and 14th amendment right to free speech. I also wanna say that the injunction took away my right to the public law library, which is my 14th amendment. It's a public, a designated public forum, first amendment protected liberty interest to take away the law library. I need pre and post deprivation due process under pre, uh, procedural due process. So there's that whole angle too. They took away my right to go to a public building because she felt some way. That's not, that's also unconstitutional. The injunction against Cahill, 14th amendment, that's what I was saying as well as Cahill's right to free speech under the Arizona Constitution. We conclude that 12 Myers, days- You're reading from the Cahill case. I've read it a number of times. All right. So All right. Do you have anything else you want to stress? Well, I want to get this on the record for my appeal. You don't have to. You've referenced the case, so everyone can pull up that case. It'll be there. It's in the record. Any sort of case that you refer to has been reported. The appellate court can pull it up themselves and read it. So. Wow. So what, you want some more, you want a different one you're saying than that? No, I'm giving you about a minute to finish your argument before I hear from you. <coughs> My argument, okay. Then we got Counterman versus Colorado, the Supreme Court held the First Amendment permits restrictions upon the content of a speech in a few limited areas. Among these historic and traditional categories of unprotected expression is true threats. True threats are serious expressions conveying that a speaker means to commit an act of unlawful violence. The existence of a threat depends not on the mental state of the author, like you said, but on what the statement conveys to the person on the receiving end. So the, your whole, my mens rea doesn't come into that. Yet the First Amendment may still demand a subjective mental state shielding some truth threats from liability. That's because bans on speech have the potential to chill or deter speech outside their boundaries. An important tool to prevent that outcome is to condition liability on the state showing of a culpable mental state. That kind of strategic protection- Mr. Myers, what? again, you're just reading from a case. That's what you do, you, you cite case laws. You don't just read from the case. You do. I'm citing a, a paragraph in the case. We have limited time. You can't. You don't get. I, I have as much time as I need to make my arguments. We have limited time. Have That's your fault. Then continue it till tomorrow, and we'll keep going. I will not. You don't get to just tell me I only get five minutes to talk. I actually do. I get to manage my courtroom how I think is proper. So this. You don't so, have to agree with it. You got 30 seconds more to tell me what that is. I've read that case. I'm aware of that case. So why are we still standing here? because I need to hear both sides and then make up my mind. Anything else you want to say? Yeah, that I don't care about contacting her at her house, but you can't take away the law library and you can't take away my YouTube and you can't take away my First Amendment, right? I called her for what I, I made it clear. I want to know if she had anything to do with my wife and if not, okay. All right. I don't need to contact her for that. Thank you. But I can go to the law school. Thank you. Ms. Walker, you get the last word.
I'm still struggling with that. We're out here today to ensure our natural rights are respected by those who swore an oath to support, protect, and defend the rights of the people. The purpose of all interactions is to peacefully promote government accountability and transparency. Please like, share, and subscribe so this message can reach as many people as possible. I implore you to peacefully seek redress to any and all of your grievances. This is a public service.